Good morning, church. Um, before I start, I would like to thank Pastor John, Pastor Rebecca, all the pastors in the house, the elders, and all the HODs and ministers for the opportunity to share the word today. I do not take this opportunity for granted. Okay, so today we'll be looking at the topic, when should we praise? Topic of today is when should we praise? If I was to ask anyone that question, I would get a rhetorical answer. And the answer would be every time, anytime, all time. But the truth is that do we praise when bad things happen? Do we praise when we don't seem to understand what's going on? That's the aspect we'll be looking at today. And uh, we'll just be looking at various characters in the Bible and we'll learn and see how they praise God when bad things happened in their life and when they didn't understand what was going on. The first person we'll be looking at is Job. Can I have a reader, please? To read Job chapter 1, verse 6 to 12. Job chapter 1, verse 6 to 12. Job 1, 6 to 12. Now, there was a day when the sons of land, and truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better that is a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he, had, and he who had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac your seed shall be called concluding that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. Verse 20, by faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, thank you. <laughs> That's good. Thank you, Adu. God bless you. Okay, we could see here from verse 13 to 16 is where I really want to highlight, was where I'd always wondered, how is it that these people kept on believing things and having faith and it didn't affect their relationship with God? I could see here that their mind was not on what they were asking for, although that's what they wanted, but their mind was in the heavenlies. Their mind was when I'm going to go back and meet my Mika. So trouble to them was not, oh, they didn't have a child, or oh, their land has been destroyed, or oh, things have been taken from them. Trouble to them was, okay, God, I'm being proud will this take me to heaven? Trouble to them was, I'm being envious right now. Is this going to disturb my meeting with you? That was where their mind was focused. And I'm encouraging someone today that if you're going through anything, just remove your mind from what you're going through. It might be hard, and sometimes it will keep coming back. But remind yourself that you're just a pilgrim on this earth, and you're, you're just here for a while. And after everything, the final promise is heaven. The final promise is the city God is creating for us up there. The final promise is coming back to meet our maker, our real home. This place is not our real home. And that's what kept these people um, that, that's what kept these people going on with the faith and holding on to God, even if everything was turning around for them. Praise Jesus. Okay, and I just have another subheading here saying why should we praise when things don't seem to go right? And um, the only real explanation is that good. we had a Bible study here. I can't remember what the um, Uncle Sam was the one that led it. And he explained to us why God is good even when bad things are happening. And if you really want to think about it, if you think of a time something bad happened and you think of it now, you would get to see why God did what he did, even if you felt that it was not good to you. 
For example, um, God telling Abraham to send Ishmael away. Human understanding would be like, ah, but that's unfair. Like, we had a child with Ishmael and just because of Isaac. Now you're telling me to send Ishmael away. I mean, that was what Abraham was saying when Sarah brought up the idea. But God was like, listen to your wife, send Ishmael away. And if you really think about it, when they did the celebration for Isaac, Ishmael was coughing. And his coughing was, God, his coughing was, they did big party for Isaac, but me, they not do big party for me. And that was almost the same thing Cain had with Abel, that Cain killed Abel. So there's a possibility that Ishmael would have killed Isaac. And so when God said, send him away, God knew what he meant. And so if you look back at your life, there are things that you think that is like, God, why? Uh, God, how? How would this come to be? Why did you do this? You would really see that there was a purpose for it. For coronavirus today, there's a huge purpose for it. Everything that's going on in the world today, there's a purpose for it. So don't say, oh, God is bad just because bad things are happening or saying God hates you. Look at the story of um, Job. Job did not do anything wrong. Basically, God was just testing and God was just trusting him. In fact, it was God's boast about him that made him go through what he's going through, despite everybody was saying that, oh, um, you've done something wicked. So it's an encouragement today. No matter what you're going through, there's a reason for it. There's a pastor that said, God is too organized to let you wander on earth. God is too organized. He's, before he allows you to start your life, he has finished it. So he's too organized to let you come to this earth and you're wondering about you don't know what you're doing. He has plans for you. He said, the plans I have for you are of good and not of evil. And to just conclude, can someone please read Psalms 138 verse 2? It's the ending part I want to bring out. For God has exalted his word above his name, meaning that God is a man of his word. There's a song by Maverick City, you're a man of your word, means that he has integrity, that if he said it, he will do it. Has God promised you anything in your life? Has, it might be for years. Abraham, God told him you'll be father of many nations, and he died, he did not see it. But today we are Abraham's children, we're from Abraham. You'll be father of many nations. God promised people different things, and um, you won't see it till like 600 years after, but a promise is a promise, and God will keep his promise. And today it's an encouragement. Has God promised you anything? Has God said he would do anything in your life? Even if he did not say it, you're thinking, oh, he probably did not say it. You're looking for a job right now, and you're saying that, ah, I really don't have a job, but God did not promise me. Let's say you not hear or you not see anything that God will give you a job. But God wrote it in his word. He said you will not lack any good thing, and a job is a good thing, and so you can use that and say, God, you promised me I will not lack any good thing. A job is a good thing, and so please give me a job. And he will keep his word concerning you. Praise Jesus. Yeah. It's an encouragement today. If you're going through anything, if you're feeling bad, if you're feeling down, just know that God has plans for you. Know that God is intentional about you. There's a part in Romans that tells us that God died for us individually. He did not die for us as a group. There's a song that I listen to that says, if I were the only one on earth, you would still come and die for me. And so God is intentional about each and every one of us. He has a purpose for us, and he's going to fulfill his word. Praise Jesus. Can we just say a little prayer? And just pray and just remind God that thing you're asking for. And that thing you need him to do for you. Just remind him. Tell him that, oh God, this is what I need. And I know that you provide for me according to your riches and glory. And Father, oh God, we know that you've heard us. We know that even before we've asked, Lord Jesus, that you've done it for us. We know that even before the bird would fall down, that we should even eat it. You know that that bird has fallen down. And so, Father, oh God, you're, you're intentional about us because we're humans. We have your spirit. And so, Father, oh God, we just pray, oh God, that you would, you would answer us individually. We pray that our joy will be full, oh God, and your name alone will be glorified through it. For in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>